Yep, it is raining in Los Angeles. Hey there, plants. All right, you guys know what's up by now. I'm heading to Starbucks, and then I'm gonna come home and get in a warm up. And then I got Bill Holman's big band this afternoon, and after that, I have an interview for a teaching position with this organization called the Harmony Project. Basically what it is, is a after school music education program for middle and high school aged kids. If you ever watch that show Mozart in the Jungle, it's the thing from that that they do with the New York Phil when they set up the organization for the kids to come and play instruments and they give them instruments and everything. So it's for that and I've been subbing for them for a little while. So they need a new trumpet instructor and we'll see if uh, they like me. I was reading somewhere that if you eat an apple a day, you can keep the doctor away. Sounds like a total crock of shit. So I'm gonna go procrastinate for a while and then get that warm up in. About to head into Holman's band. I've been doing the band for like, I don't know, two years I think. Holman's music is something that I've been into for a really long time. When I was at North Texas, he came and played a concert with the One O'Clock Lab Band when we did just like a concert of all his tunes basically. A lot of this stuff from the Thelonious Monk album that he did, Brilliant Corners. But the semester before that, I was in the Two O'Clock under the direction of Jay Saunders and he knew that Willis was coming the next semester. So we did a whole concert that was basically just like mostly Bill Holman's music and that was the stuff that was like the older Kenton stuff from like the 50s and we did a bunch of uh, you know some popular ones like we did Stompin' at the Savoy but we also did some other ones that don't get played as much like the Daily Dance you ever heard of that tune the Daily Dance we're playing at the Elmhurst Jazz Festival in February flying to Chicago or the Chicago area in February is really great the weather is fantastic and the festival is cool too. So we have a rehearsal every Thursday until the gig, and then we might go for a little while after that, but we pretty much usually only rehearse when we've got something coming up. Trumpet section's badass. Carl Saunders, the lead player, two jazz players, Ron Stout and Bob Summers, two of the heavies. But anyways, I can't have my camera on in the rehearsal space, the union rule. So I'm approaching the door, but once I get in there, camera's gotta be off, you dig? That's art. <laughs> <laughs> Following in the footsteps of last week's video, how do we build greater embouchure strength? That is a good question. What do I have written down here? Now remember from the endurance video that what we're after might not necessarily be super strong face muscles, but rather just a good positioning of the embouchure, jaw, teeth, for the mouthpiece to set on so that we can get the results that we want. The sound that we want, the range that we want, the technique that we want. Now, if we think that our embouchure is weak, it is possible that we might need to wake the muscles up so that they start experimenting, moving toward the mouthpiece and finding a better position for playing. If you practice extended practice routines, it's likely that you will find a good position, but this isn't the only way to do it. Think about somebody that's doing gymnastics and they're doing the planche. The planche is like the thing where you're holding your body weight with your hands on the ground. It's kind of like doing a plank, except that your feet are elevated. As you can imagine, there's a lot of different parts of the body that need to be spruced up to be able to do that. The shoulders, the chest, the abs, probably the legs. I don't know, I can't do a planche. My point here is that you don't necessarily need to do the planche to develop some of the muscles that are needed to do the planche. You could just do a regular plank with your feet on the ground. If a plank is difficult for you, it's probably a good idea to spend a while doing the plank so that you can develop some basic levels of fitness as well as body awareness. And that awareness is what we want. That's the good stuff. So if you want great chops that are capable of playing in the upper register, you can develop those muscles in other ways besides playing high. So in other words, you don't have to sit around and crank out high notes to build strong chops. 
We already talked about a few ways you can do it. Work on your selected weakness. Another great way to build up strong chops is to play a little, take a break, play a little, take a break, to give your embouchure a chance to learn and to adjust what it's doing in that moment. The whole idea here is to get us something different. What we already have is giving us the results we already have. When it comes to developing a stronger embouchure, in some ways, what we're really trying to do is just learn new ways for the muscles to relate to the mouthpiece, to create the buzz, to get our sound. A very easy way, a very easy way to build greater awareness, which leads to strength, better positioning, is through isometric exercises for the muscles of the face. There's a lot of different ways to do isometrics. If you want me to get down into the nitty gritty of some of the exercises that I use, put it in the comment section. I'll do a specific video for any exercise you guys want to see. But in the meantime, I've already got content out that tells you how I'm doing it. Go to BTB, read the year in review. Go to BTB, sign up for the free TB aperture control course. I talk about the pencil exercise and the mouth thigh master thing in there. The programming is very simple. Just hook it up to a habit chain. I do it right after I brush my teeth in the morning. But remember, these exercises are not necessarily just gonna give you a blazing double C. If one person can hold out the pencil for 30 seconds and the next person can hold out the pencil for 30 minutes, that does not mean that the person that can hold it out for 30 minutes is gonna play any better than the person that can hold it out for 30 seconds. These exercises are all about developing awareness. Awareness of positioning. Where my body is in space. It's the same reason that American football players study ballet, basketball players do yoga. The additional awareness brings deeper levels of awareness to what you're already doing, to how you're already playing the horn. Where the mouthpiece is on your embouchure, where the muscles of your embouchure are, in relation to the mouthpiece, how they are supporting the sound. Once you are working in a way that is helping you develop greater efficiency, greater endurance, a better functioning embouchure, you then still have to exercise patience during the process, the skill of chill. Some days, it's gonna feel great. You're gonna feel great, 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 and then for no reason at all, gonna feel like crap. That's part of the process. I don't know anybody that's been able to linearly just get better and better and better and better and better and better and better with no off days. It happens to everybody. The thing is, is that once you get to a certain point, those off days, aren't, they're not really so bad anymore. But the fact remains that they will come. Ups and downs, ups and downs. But it's kind of like this. It gets better as you go, woo! But that's a big part of developing amateur strength as well.